How you doing? How you been? What's going on? What's good? How you getting in? About to get in the fuzz. What's going on? What's going on? Keep going day. Of another day. Of another day that we call. Tuesday, and it would have been said, what's come people, you know, it's been a really uber large type of day, it's raining and stuff, and I had a doctor's appointment, which was supposed to take place at, um, 9 o'clock this morning, which I had to get up extra early, because it takes me, like, almost two hours to get in, of course, so, ambulance is coming by as soon as I'm trying to tell the story, um, let's just give it a second. <laughs> So I had to go to the doctor for and stuff like that. And I had to get there by 9 this morning. And I had to get up really early because, you know, it takes me almost like two hours to get there. So I get there to the doctor's office and stuff. And the um, nurse tells me, she's like, um, your doctor called out today. I was like, she's like, I tried to call you at your home. Why would you call me at my home and not my cell phone? I said, do you hear my cell phone listen? She was like, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, are you serious? Please hold as the truck is passing by. It's like they know I'm back video tape. Anyway, so I want to introduce you. Well, basically, I came home and stuff because I was very upset. Of course, I was upset because I traveled so far just to get a basically knock doctor there. So I got a bit of stuff like, you know, hormonal and stuff. So I'm all upset and everything. And I'm having one of my tantrums and stuff. And um, laid in the bed and went back to sleep. I was too upset, too done. And of course, the universe woke me, woke me back up. Wake up, Raven, wake up. So. And of course, once I said online and stuff, I got back online and stuff, and all of a sudden there was a message <laughs> as usual. When I'm at the point where they give up. And it was this one, the story is going to be a little different. It's going to be a little surprising to you. And reference to the Stone Wall Riot, you know. Now, people don't really know who started the, the first, who sold the first punch at the Stone Wall Riot, you know, as far as the gay uh, movement and stuff. And come to find out, it was a drag king performer. Now, not a trans man, but he was a drag queen, a lesbian, they said Butch and stuff. And his name was Stormy Delevey. Okay. Now, he died at the age of 93 years old. He was known as a black butch lesbian. You know, I have to write this down just to make sure I get my words right. Because, you know, we're very selective and picky when it comes to words and stuff like that. Now... She's a black woman, but she basically passed for white. And I'm going to give you an idea about her in reference to her storyline. And I want you to check this out. Look at this. Stormy Levy, born 1920, passed away 2014. The black butch lesbian who was rumored to have kicked off and started the Stonewall's riot. She was reported to have shouted, why don't you guys do something? As she manhandled into the police wagon handcuff. And this sparked the fight back in the 1950s and in the 60s. She was a drag king performer in the Jewel Box Review. Michelle Parkinson made a documentary about her and called this Stormy the Lady of the Jewels. Stormy Levy, earlier leader in the gay rights movement, died at 93 years old now. It says no question whether Ms. Levy was there on June 27, 1969, the night the police raided the Stonewalls in a gay bar setting off the protests that helped start the gay rights movement and are now doing New York's annual Gay Pride Week. But was um, she a cross-dressed lesbian who was clubbing by the police help set the... um? The chair is in the emotion. Some witnesses says yes, some says no, but nobody knows who threw the first punch. The first punch. But it is rumored that she did. And um, basically, um, she was a member of Stonewall's Veteran Association and regular in um, the Pride Parade. Now, before she passed away, she left it in her own words exactly what happened. Check this out. Who's Stormy? I'm a human being that survived and helped other people survive. Stormy Delavier was born to a wealthy white father and a black mother in New Orleans, Christmas Eve, 1920, caught between two worlds from the day she was born. Her father had her privately educated while her grandfather raised her. 
Well, you finally told him because everybody, the white kids were beating me up, black kids were beating everybody would jump on it. If it wasn't for because of my father's money, it was because of being black, being a, a Negro with a white face. Yeah. So he told me if I didn't stop running, I'd be running the rest of my life. And when I was 15, I stopped running, and I haven't run a day since. After leaving home, Stormy sang with jazz bands across the country, developing the silvery baritone that would serve her well in her next incarnation. So I tried to do the proper thing, you know, wear men's clothes on stage and wear women's clothes on the street. I got picked up twice for being a drag queen. Well, the guy uh, that arrested me once for being a drag queen came in above me said, uh, uh, and he said, you don't know how to tie. I said, well, if I'm not tying my tie right, why don't you come in every night and show me how I'm supposed to tie? And he did. To this day, I can tie a bow tie with even looking in the mirror. It'll be perfect. And he would always laugh, and he was a nice man. He was only doing his job, you know. In 1955, Stormy became the one girl in the Jewel Box Review, a traveling musical show of gender deception. While her girlfriend watched from the wings, Stormy would now perform as a man. Somebody told me that I couldn't do it and that I, I would completely ruin my reputation and that people did not have enough problems being black. I said, I didn't have any problem with it. Everybody else did. She made a very handsome man. <laughs> it worked for her. In June of 1969 in New York City, Stormy found herself at the epicenter of the Stonewall Riots. If there was a friend in need, Stormy would be there. That was no riot. Everybody said it's a riot. It was, it was a, a, a it was a, a disobedience, and then they started fighting back. It was a rebellion. And once they got the hang of it, <laughs> they rebelled quite well. Well, many different people say that there was a cross-dressing lesbian who sparked the Stonewall riot, but. To the best of my knowledge, no one had ever found someone who fit the description quite as well as she does until I interviewed her, and she said, the cop hit me, and I hit him back. I walked away with him, an eye bleeding, but he was laying on the ground, out. She says, I was there, and I did this, but then when I read an account of the cross-dressing lesbian, who started the riot, she said, oh, I know who that was, but I'm not going to say. Well, I got into it by accident. And then uh, <laughs> Charles Kaiser, when he wrote his book, uh, Gay Metropolis, was trying to figure out how it started, when the fight really started. They were just running around, you know, calling uh, names and things and throwing toilet paper down from the windows and what have you. And I just walked up. I, I used to come in whenever I came in town to go down to see if anybody needed help or if they were in jail to get them out, what, what I could do. So I looked like I was 20, but when that happened, I was 40, 48 years old. In the month following those fateful nights, Stormy's girlfriend of 26 years passed away, and Stormy gave up her performing career. Whether or not Stormy threw that first punch, there is no doubt she has since embraced her role as caretaker. Today, she's a presence throughout New York's West Village and Chelsea neighborhoods. Sometimes I feel like half the universe is my family. She's still going strong. And she's, it's because she loves life so much. I mean, it's as simple as that. It's because she hasn't grown old or bitter. She's grown mature and still loving and still enthusiastic. And I think she draws a lot of strength from the younger women who she sees in her job. And she acts as mother confessor to many of them. And uh, she has a very large and enthusiastic support group. She lives her life quietly and does much of what she does um, very quietly, sometimes anonymously. And I think she's happy doing that because what matters to her is that she does what she does, not that it, you know, makes a big splash. This is why I am. Remember the expression, what you see is what you get. She has appeared as a female vocalist with many name bands. Audience would not believe she was a girl due to her deep baritone voice. It took the producers of the Jewel Box Review 
to convince her that she should work as a male impersonator. Now Storm says, I did it and I'm glad. Stormy DeLevy, born 1920, died 2014, known as the Black Butch Lesbian, who was rumored to have kicked off and started the Stonewalls riot. May she rest in peace. Okay, you see that? Who knew that it was a, um, a, well, it was a lesbian that threw the first punch, you know, and that's what started the riot up, and she said basically, the cop hit her, so she knocked him out and stuff. So it was like, and since she could pass for a guy, as she saw the pictures, they thought it was just a guy, but as if it was a girl. <laughs> and I'm not surprised. So now when you sit back and you see the LGBT, you know why the L was there first. Now, because the lesbian punched, and um, it just basically got on. So now you understand why the L, the lesbian has to be. And the thing about it is that I, like, I, I, I agree with how it is set up and stuff, but I understand a lot of people don't, you know, they don't understand why. So just should put a, a little rest to why the lesbian is there as far as the LGBT, because basically a lesbian is the one who basically started. And it's funny because I didn't know about this. And the only one we seem to talk about is Marsha and um, Sylvia. But they never talk about anyone else. So here's a little history for you. Like I said before, you got a chance. You got a chance from her, from her very own mouth. So you don't have to go by history books. You have to read it. You heard what she said herself. She's like, he hit me and I hit him back and I knocked him straight on the floor. So I don't know if you know about this story as far as the stone ride. And um, let me know if you knew about her, um, Stormy. You know, she lived to be. She, she was born in 1920. She died 2014. which is only two years ago, and that's a long time to live since 1920. Anyway, the being said, um, I just want to share that with you as far as that, you know, a little more history about your people. Yes, and all my lesbians, see why I love you? I knew, <laughs> always said, if I get too far to pick a lesbian with me. Anyway, the being said, oh, anyway, the being said, I just want to let you know that I love you, and I love to hear you feel about this. And I want to thank you for watching. Guess the rain.